Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's taking a look at a Browning High Power Pistol that you would think was made for the Sultanate of Oman. At least it has a very nice Omani... well, it has an Omani crest on it. Uh, however, these pistols never saw the Omani Desert, and I think, frankly, the story on them is really interesting, and perhaps more interesting than if it was a legitimately Omani purchased gun. Now, before we start, I'll preface this by saying that the story is not 100% verified, but it comes from a very reliable source, and it's totally plausible, and I'm pretty sure that it's accurate, or else I wouldn't be presenting it to you guys. My reference on this is Anthony van der Linden's book FN Browning Pistols. Van der Linden is the preeminent scholar of FN Browning Pistols, and I, uh, I think he's got this one nailed down. So, here is the backstory on the Omani High Power. This is the result of a gentleman by the name of Paul Van He, who was a sales agent who was working with Cadillac Gage in the 1960s. Now, from a gun guy side, you may think of Cadillac Gage as the people who made the stoner uh, machine guns, stoner 63 machine guns. However, Cadillac Gage also made armored cars. They in fact made more armored cars than they did stoner machine guns. Uh, Van He was negotiating a contract with the Omani government to purchase Cadillac Gage Commando armored cars. And part of that was an armament. Armored cars are better with guns. And the armament that those commandos came with was, or that the Omanis wanted on them, was the FN Mag, a fantastic general purpose heavy machine gun. Now that put Van He in contact with FN. He had to procure FN mags for the armored cars, or at least arrange it. And while he was working on this, it came to his uh, awareness that Oman might also be interested in browning high power pistols from FN. Now, Van He was not an agent for FN, but he figured he's got the connection here, he can make this happen. And so he purchased 36 allegedly, 36 Browning High Powers from FN, had them shipped to the US. Once they arrived in the US, he had them roll marked with Omani crests. Let me show you exactly what he did here before we continue on with the story. I've got the full rig here, but we're going to go ahead and take the stock off. Just take a look at the pistol. When these came into the US, they had those serial numbers and standard uh, FN Herstal manufacturing marks. When the pistols arrived in the US, this Omani crest was added to them. Uh, worth pointing out, a little detail of the Omani crest there, that dagger in the center points to the left. I bring this up because the first nine of these pistols that were roll stamped were actually done backwards with the dagger pointing to the right. Uh, they figured out the problem after the first uh, nine, though, and got the remaining 27 done properly. This is one of the properly done ones. Also worth pointing out, if you have seen uh, like engraved crests or stamped crests on uh, FN pistols, you will note that this is rather shallower, this is a lighter engraving than FN's own factory work tended to be. Beyond that, everything here is standard FN, uh, tangent 500 meter sight to go along with the shoulder stock slot. We'll point out on this particular one, for some reason, the magazine release button is pretty thoroughly jammed in place. There's probably just something hard gunk in it or something that needs to be cleaned out. But as a result, I'm not going to pull the magazine out for you. Also, for what it's worth here, we have the standard military pattern stock and holster combination. Just a plain board stock. That's what the Belgian military did as well. And then I'm pretty sure that this holster has never actually been used. It does not look like that's ever had a pistol in it. But that is the standard uh, type of holster, stock holster, that FN was manufacturing for the high power even as late as the 1960s for customers who wanted them. After getting the guns engraved, Van He then uh, demonstrated them to the Omani delegation he was working with. Although I think demonstrated in this case basically means, hey, I've got these pistols, let's go out to the range and play around with them. And at this point the deal fell apart because FN found out what was going on. FN's not uh, particularly interested in losing out on a deal like this to some random armored car guy, and they would end up uh, selling 5,000 Browning High Powers to Oman themselves. 
those guns, which were actually delivered, didn't have any national crests. They're just totally standard production line high powers. So what we're left with is instead a, a story about business practices and the shenanigans that sometimes go on, which I think is a pretty cool story. So um, a big thanks to Anthony Vanderlinden for doing the research and the documentation on the actual background of these pistols. I will also point out that, kind of ironically given that they never actually went to Oman, these pistols are specifically exempted from the NFA uh, by ATF. Uh, Omani Crest pistols with original Belgian production shoulder stocks are not NFA registrable items, and so it can have a stock on it like this without any sort of tax stamp, which is also pretty cool for the collector. So what you've got here is a full late production Belgian FN military high power rig, tangent sight, holster, stock, the whole works. Uh, if this were not, like this would be a really cool collector piece even without the uh, alleged Omani connection. So pretty cool. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.